how did you become sober? Was it a mo- a moment or a series of moments? T- tell tell us how that everybody's process, wanting the way to know. It was getting up to Monterey or making something out of wood or acting. <laughs> it was a process in stages. And I was not ready at first. I thought I was ready. I had the DTs for the first time, Dotsie, in 1976. I went, I got to get to one of those support groups that they talk about. You know, Is that like meetings. the shakes? Yes, the shakes are much more. You see things. There was a vampire in my room about to bite me. He went away Ooh. when I really cut, opened my eyes properly and saw him. But I was not asleep. I was just closing my eyes, trying to sleep because I hadn't slept in days with so much cocaine oh. and alcohol. I was in bad shape. I had had the DTs before. Closed my eyes again, trying to get sleep. Totally awake. There's a guy hanging from a noose. There's a freight train coming. Ning, 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 ning. You know, all this stuff was happening. And it finally went away. And I woke up and I went, I have got to get to... Oh, there was kind of a wonderful God shot before that. I came back from... I had to work that next morning. I went to work, didn't get fired. Worked with the DTs kind of finally, uh, you know, ebbing away. And uh, I went to work and came back. And my then girlfriend, soon to be wife, Ingrid, said... You got to take a hot bath. You got to stop drinking and using here. You know, maybe you should just take a Valium to calm down. I couldn't even take a Valium. I was that bad off. And I called up. Oh, no. I turned on the television because I just wanted to see something that wasn't a monster movie I'd seen last night in the back of my eyelids with the vampires and stuff. I turned on the television and a show was just starting. And it was when the very beginning, the very second the show was starting. It said, David Wolper presents Dick Van Dyke in The Morning After. <laughs> I know. It was about sobriety. Oh I just turned the TV on. It was like instantly that second, not in the middle. What is this about? This guy seems to be drinking like I was. It was the very beginning open. I almost turned it off because it was just blocked nothing at first on a channel that I knew worked. I was about to turn it off to go to another channel. And oh, uh, David Wolfer presents Dick Van Dyke in the morning after. And it was exactly what I was going through. And the denial I was in, what have you. So I called up and found out, found a meeting Went to a meeting when I got back to L.A., which was like two days later. Went in there. This great guy was talking. Wonderful guy. Very successful guy talking. And it was funny. And the people yeah. in the room looked great. That I thought they're going to all be bums with a, like a trench coat and a bottle of Toke and a paper bag, you know, trying to not drink. The people that looked like all of us. And so I went, mm-hmm. this is it. I'm going to do it. But I had everything going against me, Dotsie. Because three days later, I was in such good shape in my 20s. I ate good. I would get sleep regularly. You know, I exercised, went to the gym. Three days later, I went, I feel fantastic. I couldn't have had the DTs. I had food poisoning. That meal I ate when I was oh. at Lake Tahoe before I came, I had food poisoning. That's what it's it the was. the addict, yep. Exactly, the addict yep. talking yourself into something. So I did that again and again. And finally, so many people helped me. The actor Bruno Kirby helped me a lot. What My wonderful friend, I'll talk about him in a minute too. My first wife, Ingrid, was fantastic. She helped me. But it was the people that were over me and gave me tough love that helped me every bit as much. And there's one guy named Billy Boyle. And he saw me come in now for the fifth time. I've been in and out. It's 1978, as it turns out. I come in for the fifth time coming in and out of the revolving door at AA. And I walk in. I'm going to the meeting. And Billy says, hey, hey, Slim, how you doing? You could smoke back that meeting. Let me ask you, how many times has this you been here? Four or five times now you're coming back in? Then it's five, Billy, but... Why are you being so negative? It's, oh, Christ, you're never going to get sober. What a terrible thing to say. Why would you say that to me? He said, well, you got everything going against you. I told aren't you married still? Yeah, to Ingrid. He said, you have two kids? Yeah. You live in Hancock Park? I got an apartment there. Yeah. You're working? Yeah, I'm on Battlestar Galactic. You went, oh, you're screwed. Yeah. What do you mean I'm screwed? It all sounds good to me. He said, because you haven't lost anything. Here's the way it's going to work now because you are going to lose everything if you keep drinking. You're going to call me, not now, like you're doing now, telling me you drank. You're going to call me before you drink. Do you hear me? Or I'll come over there and kick your ass. By the way, he's about 5'4", this guy, 120 pounds. I'm 6'4", 200 pounds. Okay, Billy, you're going to kick my ass. You, I will. I'll come there and kick your ass. Okay, Billy, thank you. So then some time goes by, and an alcoholic will regularly drink because something bad occurs. You learn out. You learn who your mother is, who you th- wasn't who you thought it was or something happens you take a pill you you drink or use in some way because it's something bad but sometimes it's something good in my case i'm about to work on a movie called the in-laws with peter falk and alan arkin i'm at lax and this guy starts to open up the bar it's 8 a.m and he's opening up the bar at 8 a.m at lax at the terminal where i'm about to go out of town and i go over the bar i go screw it i can't take the pressure i'm newly sober i'm sober like 90 days now maybe 
I can't oh. take the pressure. I could work with these big stars. There's some confusion about my hair color. I did this thing with Kurt Russell that dyed my hair. It didn't go back to my blonde color. They're going to fire me. My hair is red instead of blonde. They're going to like that. They're going to fire me. I better have a big red Bloody Mary to just to calm down. <laughs> so I order Bloody Mary, bring it up to my lip stop. See, I literally like this. I go, Christ almighty, Billy goddamn Boyle. I put the drink down, walk over. There's no cell phones then. This is right. 1978. So I go over to pay phone, dial the number. Hello, who the hell is this? Call me this early. I Sorry, Billy, you told me to call you. Who is it? Said Bagley. Oh, okay. Where are you? Sound like you're at the airport. I am. And you told me to call you before I had a drink. And so I'm about to take a drink and I'm calling you. Okay. He said, oh, where are you headed? He's like casual about it, Dotsie. Right. <laughs> I'm going to Cuernavaca through Mexico City. But I'm going to, not only am I going to drink at the bar, Billy, maybe you don't understand what I'm saying. This is a first class ticket here I have in my hand. I'm going to drink yeah. on the plane. I probably have four or five on the plane for free. So, uh, he says, oh, okay, call me when you get there. You're going to be fine. I said, no, I'm not going to be fine, Billy. Bartender, did I just order a drink? Yeah, you did. You're going to come drink it? Yeah, I'm coming right now. I'm going to drink right now. He said, no, you're not. I said, yes, I am. I said, why am I not going to drink? He said, because you called me. Uh, yeah. yeah. And I realized it was true. He said, if you wanted to drink, take that drink, you would have drank it before you, before you called me, or you wouldn't have called me at all. If you wanted to drink, you wouldn't have come into these goddamn meetings like you did in 1976. You don't want to drink. You've just forgotten that for a minute. Now, like I said, call me when you get to Cuernavaca. You get, uh, he hangs up on me. I did not take that drink. Mm -hmm. I did not take a pill. I say It wasn't Cuernavaca. about what he was going to say to you. It was exactly. about you taking the action of calling. I didn't get that either until you explained that. Yeah, he knew, he knew that he knew my intention better than I did because every time he'd done that in the past, he, it was a trick he played, I think, another newcomer. You know, he'd say, call me before you drink. And then they would call me and he'd just be like casual about it. <laughs> Everybody gets pissed off. And then he <laughs> tells them what's actually happening. And you're stunned by it. I was just stunned by it because it was true. If I wanted to drink, I would have taken that drink. I would have drank in the plane. I would have not called him. I would have never seen him again. But I didn't want to drink. And because of that, I got sober. How were your urges on the plane that day? They were minor. I had what they call a spiritual experience, kind of a God shot. I kind of... Uh, I went there and and I did have decidedly red hair because I did this show Elvis with Kurt Russell playing Elvis and I played the drummer and I had to have black hair. So they dotted black promising me since I started the next day on the in-laws with Peter Falk and Alan Arkin, they would bring it back to my color, exactly my blonde color that they hired back at the casting session. Right. But now my hair is red. So I went in oh, and went right to see the director, Arthur Heller. I said, Arthur, this is a totally temporary red. And so I just put it into come right out lie. <laughs> It'll come right out. But I think this guy is not a blonde, but a redhead. I think it's better for the character. What do you think, <laughs> Arthur? Yes, that's actually great. I like it a lot. <laughs> I was pretty upset. And if he said no, I said, oh, I thought it was going to come out, but it doesn't. So I'm I'm a redhead. In that. Oh, no, I'm not actually a redhead. If you see the in-laws now, somebody color corrected it. They went, Ed Bailey isn't a redhead back then. He wasn't ever oh, a redhead. They, oh, they my me, God. <laughs> they made me blonde again. So it's kind of funny the way things work digitally these days. So strange. Yes. 